case we have last week's start we're going to pull that right onto the report and if you think about it we don't necessarily need to plug our last week date parameters into the report to uh, verify that they're working or not so all we're going to do now is go to preview and we can see that here's what our 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 minimum date out of the last full week is looking at it's it's reporting 520 and if we look at our calendar 520 is actually that sunday so here's the way that crystal dates work and actually almost every other kind of automagical date formatter in the universe works they always begin their weeks on sunday and they always end them on Saturday. So in this case, Crystal's last full week would be Sunday to Saturday. In our case, we want the last full week to be Monday to Friday. So the first thing we need to do is to fix our 520. We gotta make that 521. This is easy enough to just go back into our last week start formula and literally add one to it. And remember, whenever we do any kind of math with dates, um, all that's going to do is that's going to add just one day. Okay, so now we're reliably returning whatever last Monday was. And in Crystal's case, the way we're getting there is we're getting last Sunday and then we're incrementing one day to Monday, revealing our, our 521, which is that Monday. So now we kind of got to do the same thing for uh, last week end. So we'll create a new formula. We call this last week end. And again, we're going to use our last full week, and we're going to throw that to our maximum function. And that's going to pull the maximum value out of that list for us. So now we can drag that right next to our week start and see what Crystal thinks it should be. So in this case, it's throwing out 526. And, uh, and like I mentioned before, 526 is actually on that Saturday. So in most cases, we just want a business week. So we're going to take that formula and we're going to subtract one. Aha. So now we got 521 to 525. Let's just eyeball that. Double check it. 21 to 25. Okay, great. So that is our last full business week. So you can see that right here, we haven't even plugged anything into the, the select expert yet. And, we'll, and we're already getting... Uh, reliably last Monday through last Friday's dates so now uh, when it comes time to plug in our parameters to, to select all records that have been created last week all we have to do now is go into our select expert select our create on date we're gonna go right to our formula editor because that's where all the really heavy lifting uh, really happens here so in this case we want our create on to be greater than, or I'm sorry, uh, equal to or greater than last week's start. And the create on should be less than or equal to last week end. Oh, and you know what the problem is there? I try to save my form. I'm actually glad we ran into this. I try to save my form and saying, hey man, there's an error in the formula. Do you want to save it anyway? Well, what do you mean there's an error? I know what I'm doing, right? It says a number, a currency amount, Boolean, date, time, date, time, or string is expected here. I think all I had to do here was I just screwed that up a little bit. Great. So I just screwed up my little alligator mouth. Wasn't supposed to be chomping on the equal sign like I learned in elementary school. At any rate, moving along, now that our formula is correct, we go ahead and we save and exit that. We refresh our data. Go back into my formula editor. <laughs> so at any rate, unfortunately I don't have any records in my system which pertain to that date range, but what I'm really trying to show you guys is that right here by dragging the formulas onto the report header, it's very easy for us to derive dates based at runtime. There are all kinds of other dates that we can derive at runtime. For instance, the beginning of the first, second, third, or fourth quarters, uh, things of that nature. So uh, again, whenever you're, you have your end user continually entering in, in this case, last week's date range, we can make it a little easier for them. In this case, all the end user has to do is open up the report and refresh it 
and they're automatically going to get a list of last week's uh, records. Okay, excellent. Moving right along, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually clear out my select expert. Just that easy. Very good. Okay, so let's kind of look at the report that we're getting. What we are is we're looking at company contact, state, the create on, and the record age. So let's add one more field here because I want to show you guys a really cool way to get conditional running totals. So actually I want to grab my one of my key fields here. I'm going to grab key one. I'm going to remove record age. Easiest way to move objects on a crystal report is to select them and use your arrow keys, which I'm doing right now. Seems to be the best way to do it. Okay, so our key one is kind of like our, our customer type, whether they're uh, a prospect or a customer or whether they came in through a sponsorship. So let's imagine, okay, well, the very easiest thing to do here, because we're breaking on a company name, that's where our group is, it's very easy to... Let me just remove this cross tab. It's very easy to summarize. If we go to insert a summary, we can insert a count based upon company. And what we get here is just a, a simple summary, a simple total of how many records belong in each group. And that's actually the easiest way to get a summary out of Crystal is through that, excuse me, that insert summary menu item. However, the needs of management are complex and many. So it is very typical that all get a request like this. Well, Justin, I need to know I need to know how many records are in New York and Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania uh, correspondingly. And I think to myself, well, hell, that's kind of easy. All I have to do is count the New Yorks and I count the Pennsylvanias and I can you know, get a couple of running totals here on the bottom of the report and everything's great. But no, it's not always quite that easy. So let's say the boss is going to say, well, I only want a New York record to count if it's a sponsorship. And I only want a PA record to count if it's a prospect. So right now we're looking at, at relatively complex running total conditions. So let's just kind of note this down so we don't get lost. So the boss wants counts of records. And for the New York records, they have to be sponsorships. And for PA, they have to be prospects. Okay, well, now what you would typically do on a report to easily get, in, for instance, let's just worry about the first item, to easily get a count of New York sponsorships, what you typically do as a crystal reporter is you, is you make the report only grab New York sponsorships and then you just have a like a relatively dumb running total right but the boss wants to see both the New York and the PA totals on the same report so we can't touch the select expert so any kind of conditional selection cannot be done at the select expert level because we need to count both the PA and the New York people so what we actually have to do is we're gonna create a couple of formulas. Actually, let me remove that create on stuff, move my key ones over here a little bit, shrink them up. So the first thing the boss wants to know is um, the only New York records I, sh I should count are the New York sponsorships. So let's just create a very simple formula. We'll make a new formula and we're going to call this New York records. And remember, the boss wants New York sponsorship. So in this case, I want my state to be equal to New York and my key one to be equal to sponsorship. Now, what does that do for me? Let's, let's always keep in mind what we're doing. Okay, contact.state equals New York and my key one is sponsorship. Oh, what I actually want to do is I actually want to use an if-then-else. I want to say if all that's true then give me a one otherwise give me nothing so if you guys haven't explored or used the if then else in crystal this is an excellent opportunity to do so the if then else is basically saying if that's true 
if the current record is both from New York and as a sponsorship, then say one. Otherwise, if any, if it's not any of these things, then just tell me zero. And, and why does this make sense now? Because if we drag that field right onto the detail section, we can see what records are going to click for New York and what records are not. So you can see that right here we have a, a pretty flexible way to make complex criteria decisions right here on the line of the report. So in this case, it's fairly easy. It needs to be in New York and it needs to be a sponsorship. Then we get a one, otherwise we get a zero. Okay, so let's go on to the second part of our issue. We want only PA prospects. So we're going to make a new formula. We're going to call this PA records. So in this case, same idea. We're going to use our if then else. We're going to say if my state is equal to PA and my key one is equal to prospect, then give me a one. Otherwise, give me a zero. And then we're going to drag that field right onto the report. So, oops, let me just justify that a little bit better. So now what we have here is a whole separate field working logically for us, which is going to pick out what the boss considers to be PA records. So now it's a very simple exponent of just totaling these two numbers in order to get our New York versus our PA records. So that's easy enough to do. All I have to do now is just insert a summary. And I'm going to insert, in this case, I want to select my field first. So my field's going to be, in this case, New York records. And I want a field that calculates the sum. And that's why we're returning only a 1 or a 0, because we want to be able to just sum up all of those 1s. And actually, I want a grand total field here, which you can select right there. I hit OK. And what I have here in my report footer, and also my group footer, and you'll see how that acts here in a minute. The group footer, just sum totals you know, for the group. We're going to go ahead and remove that. We don't care too much about that. What we are concerned about is the number on the bottom of the, the report. In this case, there's only one record which satisfies the New York Records criteria. So let's do the same thing with our PA records. Again, we go to insert, a, insert a summary, and we want to select our field. In this case, it's our PA records, and it's a sum, and we want it to be a grand total. I hit OK. I remove the, the group footer total because we're not worried about that. We just want a grand, grand total. To make it stick out, I'm going to go ahead and select those items and increase my font size a little bit. And if you want, you could insert some text fields here. So on and so forth. So what I actually have are, are two records that satisfy the PA criteria and only one which satisfies New York. Easy enough to change the decimal point here. If we right click and go to format field, we can remove the decimal point from those calculations. But what I'm trying to show you guys is this is a way to calculate, and, and, and incidentally, you don't need these formulas on the report. We can actually remove these right here and our grand totals still work. Because even though none of these formulas are inserted on the report, they're still clicking, they're still working every time a record is read. So we don't need to junk up our report with that crap just to take advantage of it.